So the person is not, it's not connecting to that line for some reason. Will you allow the children's hair to lock? Absolutely, everybody's hair gonna lock. We don't, we are never cutting our hair again. Point blank period. You know what I'm saying? So most definitely. Most definitely. The hair must lock. Is Mama Joy a part of carbonation? Um, you, sh you should ask Mama Joy that. You know, you should just ask Mama Joy that. But for us, Mama Joy will always be a part of carbonation. Yeah, yes, he is. He's our family. That's our family member. For me, she's our frequency. Personally, yeah. That's it. You have to ask her. I'm gonna take it inside. This, this joint. This joint going crazy. Is it true that the human consciousness rises and falls and is in endless cycles? That's a fact, yes. That's true. What happens after death? Um, there is no death. You find out there is no death. That's what happens. Peace reflection, what's going on? Peace. Hi. Hey. So I live in Canada. Have you ever been to Canada? Absolutely. What do you think of Canada? I don't like to recognize the Babylon system as recognize the earth. I don't recognize countries. I recognize humanity and I recognize the earth. Canada is a is a corporation. The word Canada. Some man made up this corporation. I recognize the earth. So I, I sent a question. How many kids do you want to have? As, as many as I can. As many as I can. Of course. And, I mean, um, do you find it complicated to have kids with uh, different women? How does that... How, does, how do you guys self. all get along? Um, Pardon? 
Well, the, 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 because of law and principles, we all ha agree on the same laws and principles. We have the same mind. Um, and so communication, communication is key. And um, just staying focused on the mission, you know what I'm saying, and what we come to do. And just staying on one mind, mm -hmm. one mind. But I mean, you, you have to agree that at times it can be difficult for the women to get along. Um, I mean, you know. Well, what, well, what you have to understand is that we're dealing with generational curses. So it takes a very intelligent woman to hold my, my space in my mind. You cannot be weak to hold, and hold my space. You cannot be immature and hold my space. Um, so it's not for everybody. It's for a chosen few. And um, so if you're a woman and you're in my space, you got to be right with yourself. You have to have self-control, discipline. So are you attracted, are you more attracted to a woman's outer look or are you attracted to her mind? What, what, what? what? I, I'm, attract, I'm attracted to only my mind in a woman. If a woman has my mind, I'm attracted to her. I love myself. I love my frequency. She's my family. <laughs> Um, I'm attracted to myself. If a woman holds my frequency, that's the most attractive thing ever to me. Point blank. Right. And that's, would you agree that's that? That's what I look for. Would you agree that as you get older, you know, looks don't matter as much. It's more of what what she can bring to the table in terms of uh, a woman's role. You know, uh, taking care of her man, uh, being a good mother. Um, it's a give and take. Right, uh, but okay. So, but what what my answer to that is, um, we don't believe in age. That's not our frequency of thought. We're gods. We're infinite, immortal beings. We don't believe in age. We believe that we're infinite. You understand what I'm saying? Um, again, if a woman can hold my mind, she knows my knowledge completely inside and out. Then we are married. <laughs> that, 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 that's it, we're married. We're mm -hmm. married and nothing can separate us. Nothing can separate us. Can I just wife. ask one more question? And I, I appreciate you asking me questions. No, you can, you can, answering you can my ask question. as many questions as you, as you would like as long as they're intelligent. I like your question. Thank you. Um, so do you believe in God? Do you believe that we have one God and that Jesus is his son? Do you believe in that? Great question. Um, I believe that we are God, and I believe that we are the Son. But somebody created us, so um, we didn't create you ourselves. Believe, you, you, you believe that someone created us. That's something that you choose to believe, but that doesn't make it true. Well, when I go outside and I see the beautiful sky and the sun and nature, that wasn't created by humans. That okay, I, well, I can, I can give you another perspective if you have a little, a, a couple seconds. I, can I give do. You another perspective. Okay, so do you know how your eyeballs work? Uh, well, of course I do. And I know my eyebrows were created just perfectly, were designed to, you know, if, if we're sweating, it, it, in other words, our bodies were created so perfectly that it couldn't have just been, um, we couldn't have just, like, popped up here. We were designed, we were created by one God. That's what I believe. Um, and Okay, so again, I'm, I'm, I'm just asking you a simple question. Do you, know, do you understand how your eyes work? Of course. Explain to me how your eyes work. How do they work? How how how, how does sight work? Because you talked about looking at the sun. So our eyes are to see, to see, but um, you know, when God created us, He could have just given us eyesight. He gave us um, eyesight with color. Are you going to answer the question about how the eyeballs work? How does your sight work? How does sight work? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm not a, a doctor, so I, I can't answer that. Well, 
Well, I, I, I asked you if you knew. You said, of course. So I, so I, w- I would like to enlighten you. Okay, enlighten me. Yes. Okay, so your eyeballs are actually receiving photons, light okay. particles, for caught photons. These photons are actually sent through the retina of your eye and then received through your optical nerve and the, and then turns into electrical signals uh-huh. and then your brain, which is encased in darkness, interprets what what you what what those electrical what those electric um those photons are. So let me let me make it straight to you. This is this is something that's mind blowing, right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Your eyes are not really dealing with anything outside of itself. Your brain, which is encased in darkness, who has it's never seen the outside, tells your eyes what it's seeing. That's how your uh-huh. eyes work. Your eyes send a signal to your brain, which is encased in darkness. It cannot see outside your head. It's encased in darkness. So your eyes are definitely playing a trick on you. Because your eyes and what your eyes receive, your brain, which is encased in darkness and cannot see the outside world, is actually telling you what's going on. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. If you think about it, if you think about how your brain is in this darkness, right? Uh-huh. Right? And 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 what your brain is telling your eyes what it's seeing. And so and so is your brain telling you what you're feeling, because that's your nervous system. When you were touching something, uh-huh. your 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 brain, which is encased in darkness, who has it has never experienced the outside world, is in fact telling you that you're experiencing something external. And this is an amazing phenomenon because if we cut the nerve uh-huh. that, that travels from your eyeball uh-huh. to your brain, then you will not be able to see anything. Did you know we only use maybe 3% of our brain? Um, 3 or 4% of our brain? I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not talking about how much percent of the brain you use. I'm just talking about how your eyesight works because you were talking about looking at the sun and how God created the sun and nature uh-huh. when truly your mind did. Your mind is giving you the illusion that there's a sun, that you have a body, Everything that you see, touch, hear, taste, um, feel, right, or, or, or should I say smell, um, is literally electrical signals that your brain is picking up, but your brain has never experienced the outside world to, to, for there to even be any, for this to be true. So your brain is interpreting and perceiving life from what your mind tells you is there. Now, deeper than that, so, this is what I teach. So deeper what? than that, this is what I teach. This is what I teach, okay. deeper than that. In every cell of your body, there's a genetic code that is active on the DNA. In every cell, we know that in the, in the nucleus of a cell is a DNA. In every cell of your body, there's something uh-huh. called a genome. Now, right? Uh-huh. This yes. genome, this, this, this genome are the active genes on your DNA strand that make you look the way you look, that make you see what you see, that make you, you know, feel the way you feel, because there's uh-huh. genes that are active on your DNA, right? So, uh-huh. your genome is different than mine because I'm a different expression, and, and, the, and the genome of a tree is a different expression of DNA, and I'm a different expression of DNA because I have different genome, right? The active genes. Now, what you're experiencing, what you're experiencing in life, this phenomenon, is a projection of your genome, which means that whatever your code is on your DNA strand, you're being projected a reality written in code from that, that's projecting, right? Holographically. Okay. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me finish. It's projecting holographically from your DNA, which is your true mind. When you ask, like, where's my mind at? It's in every cell of your body. So your brain is made up of brain cells. Your heart is made up of cells. Your whole being is made up of cells. And in each cell of your body is DNA. So your mind, if we want to locate your mind, is in your genes. It's in your DNA. So that is where you're being projected from. So if someone can alter your genetic, if someone can alter your genetic code, your genome, right, by food, by atmosphere or environment or people, Right? 
We can all ah. change that code. If we, this is what CRISPR is all about. I don't know if you heard of CRISPR. CRISPR is a genetic modification. How they're, how they're, they're actually designing babies, right, by shutting off certain genes. It's called CRISPR. C R I S P R. CRISPR is a genetic modification tool that they're using, a microRNA tool that they're using to actually genetically modify or alter, right, the organic uh, genetic code of a being, right? So this is very important to understand because if you do not understand biology, then you won't understand how life works. So your mind that's perceiving or perceiving this projection that you're in is actually in your DNA. It's in your DNA. So when you say, where are we located in the body? You're located inside of every cell of your being. That's where your mind is at. Your mind is in your DNA. And so you're so, refreshing and walking around in your mind. You walk around in your mind's program. Yeah. So the times when I, because I've seen you quote some really, really beautiful Bible verses from the Bible. So mm -hmm. where, who do you think wrote the Bible? Where, what, what, what compels you to uh, share a post from the Bible? Where do you think it comes from? Who do you think wrote the Bible? If you don't believe that we were created by God. Okay, so I, I not only talk about the Bible, but there's other books that I, I, I always bring up now. It's like the Holographic Universe. Uh, a man wrote, wrote a book about that. Uh, I'm, all of my knowledge is written in books. You understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So I'm not just referring to just the Bible. When I just talk to you about the eyes, that's in the science book uh -huh. uh, of today. And every, all of my knowledge is in books. I use the Bible to reference like I use science, like the holographic universe or biology or astrology to reference, um, to put together what I'm trying to articulate. So the Bible is just a book written by, um, he said, or she, uh, what they call uh, naysayers. Uh, naysayers, uh, the gospel according to Matthew, or gospel according to Mark, or gospel according to John. Um, they didn't actually write those books. Those were naysayers that wrote the book that carry these stories along. So the Bible is a compilation of stories, script. It's, it's like a movie. It has scriptures. It has a script. And so these are stories and allegories that not are not, not, not specifically supposed to be taken, um, you know, like, you know, as is. These stories are, have deeper meanings to them. They're metaphorical. You know what I'm saying? So these, these it's like the three little pigs. I always use the example of the three little pigs. If I told you the story of three little pigs, the first little pig uh, built his house of straw, the second little pig built his house of uh, uh, wood, and the third little pig uh, built his house of brick, and, you know, the big bad wolf came and blew the first, you know, it's a, it's a metaphor to the story. It's a meaning to the story. We wouldn't idolize the three little pigs. No, we would not idolize them. Yo, they were real. We would not even argue about if the three little pigs were real because we get the metaphor of the story. And so the Bible... Is what we how you is the correct way to use the Bible is metaphorically. You know what I'm saying? To so use it uh, like Jesus walking on water. Did Jesus walk on water? No. There was a story behind the, what, what Jesus was the story of Jesus walking on water, right? Peter sees Jesus walking on water. And he says, If that's you, Jesus, I will come out into the water and walk. He said, Come on, Peter. So Peter starts to walk on the water. And Peter was walking on the water with faith. And then Peter started looking at the wind blow. And the waves moving, right? And then he starts to sink. And Jesus had to grab him and say, give him faith. And does that mean that that story exists? And does that mean that Jesus exists? No. That means the, story, the meaning of that story is when you're focused on your goals, do not take your eye off the prize. There will be distractions, just like somebody that goes to college. First year, they go to college, they, they, they're focused, right? Then all kind of other stuff. Oh, I want to be a doctor. By the time the fourth year comes, they done trains they measure about four or five times because they haven't put, kept eyes on their goals. So they sink, and we all fail when we do not focus on our goals. And so that was the, the metaphor of that story. But people have idolized the three little pigs. People have put the three little pigs in the picture and said, oh, I'm the, I'm, I'm the third pig. And the third pig was this and started talking about the nationality of the third little pig. It was a boar. It was it was a boar, you know. You know and we're missing the point of the story. And that's what the Bible is. It is a, um, a metaphor. Metaphor. Uh -huh. Book of naysayers that went through and read these things. 
And uh, when you look at Jesus in the Bible, we're looking at uh, the example of a human being when they come into the Christ conscious or when they become to the zenith of what the, the uh, human can become, which is God's body, which is I am the Christ. And, and all Christians and all humans should want to reach that epitome and not make Jesus the one and only Christ and become a Christian themselves and become a disciple themselves and become like Christ. He said, be ye perfect. You know what I'm saying? So um, you're supposed to be like Christ. So you're supposed to be Christian. So you're supposed to say, I am God. Because Christ said, I am God. I am, the, I am God. And you're supposed to come into that Christ. And Christians today won't talk about that. You know what I'm saying? They won't talk about the fact that if you call yourself a Christian, you're, you're calling yourself the Christ, the Christos. And the real, the real uh, becoming Christ is to become like Christ. Christ-like. So, a Christian is supposed to be someone that believes that they are God, because Christ believed that he was God. And then they took the story, and they, and politically, they changed the scripture to, to make the movie what they wanted to be. But you have to be able to look and see where it was politically messed with and everything, and not take it so serious. Um, the Bible is not something that you want to live your life through. No. Um, completely, because you're wow. confused that way. You have to... You have to make sure that you you science. It's okay to read the Bible as a reference, but not use it as a as just the only book that you base your life in. Mm -hmm. That that well, I'm Christian. I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. We're all different. We all are free to believe what we want, um, and so that's where we that's where we're different. And I really appreciate you answering my questions. You were cool. You were chill. And uh, I wish you guys all the best and, and take care of that beautiful little baby you have. I'm thankful. Thank I'm you. Thanks for calling. That was a good dialogue. I was able to get some things out. Appreciate that caller for calling in. Uh, let's take a question. Um, let's see which one of these I like. Huh? Right, I'm gonna pick a good one. Oh, I like this one. Can you talk about controlling feelings and emotions? Okay. If you cannot control yourself, you will not be able to control your life, and you will be the devil's playground. Your mind will be the devil's playground. The goal in life is to learn self-control. To master oneself, to master the world. Uh, it is impossible for you to control anything. Or, you know, and and I, let me say this. Um, if you want to be happy in life, you're going to have to have control over your life. You're not going to be able to control your life if you can't control your emotions. So it's very important that we start studying how to control our emotions. When I, when I say this, uh, uh, we, we, what we teach here in Carbonation is that you cannot control feelings without controlling thought. It's everything is thought-based. All of your feelings. If you want to learn how to control your feelings, you have to control your thoughts, the way you're thinking. If you can control the way you're thinking and your perception, then you can control your feelings. Your feelings are, thought, are governed by your thought. Very simple. There's no feeling, no vibration without thought frequency. It's very simple. Now, if you think about something that made you upset, it came from a thought. Whether it's what somebody said, right? You received a thought. If I say, hey, you're stupid. And you look at it and you hear you say, you calling me stupid. There was a thought first, boom. The thought invoked the feeling and then you responded, right? If we can control how we perceive the thought, we can control our emotions. We can control our feelings. Because on one hand, someone calls you sin and say, hey, you're stupid. Well, that's their opinion. This is one way to look at it. You can look at it like, Who you, you calling me stupid? I'm not stupid. And defend yourself. You can look at it from that perspective. Or... We can choose to look at it like this person doesn't know me. 
they're obviously in their feelings, they're hurt. I'm stupid, okay? That's your opinion. I know you are, but what am I? I'm rubber, you glue. Anything you say bounces off, bounces off me and stick to you. You know, you can, you can control how you feel and govern how you feel rather than allowing others to invoke the spirit in you. Um, you are totally in control of your own self now. Now, you can start to control your world and create what you would think is happiness. But you must first control yourself. And so, how to control yourself is to always observe your thoughts. If you observe the thought and you know your astrological energy, study your natal chart so you can learn how your mind uses thought to regulate emotion. Because your mind uses thought to govern emotion. So you can't feel a way unless you think a way. You're always feeling what you're thinking. If someone feels bad and they're crying and they're down, it's because they're, look, they're thinking negative thoughts. So a negative thought will always give you a negative vibration because it is the expression of that thought. Well, if you change the way you're thinking and the perspective that you're looking at, right? Uh, people do this all the time um, at funerals, right? They say, oh, she's in a better place. They're giving you another perspective of how to look at it. Oh, uh, she, was, she was tired. She had to go. She's with God now. And this is another way we deal with it. So when we look at it from that perspective, we're like, right, she's with God. She's happy. I'm fucked up. I'm still here being tested. My mom died, and she's in a better place. Rather than, oh, I lost my mom. These are the other thoughts. I lost my mom. I'm never going to see her again. Oh, my God. We were so cool. And how can I ever forget her, her scent, her smell? That perspective will always vibrate a very negative, low vibrational feeling. And so you will cry and feel down and get depressed until a friend comes along and gives you another perspective of some different thoughts. Well, she's in another place. Would you rather her be here sick, being tortured, or rather her be at rest? She's at rest now. She, she's with in a better place. And when you start to think, oh, my mom's in a better place, now you can start to feel different because you are thinking different. So always remember, always remember, if you want to control your emotions, be in control of your thoughts. Observe your thoughts. Start listening. When you're feeling bad, ask yourself, what are the thoughts that are making me feel bad? But you, you must have focus. Because when we're emotional, a lot of times we're driven by those emotions. We don't even think about the thoughts. We're just driven by those emotions. We're possessed by our emotions. We do not think about what is, is, is the cause of these feelings. So we can't take control, and we're out of control. And so life controls us. We don't control life. So anything that happens in life, we're responding, and we're not thinking about self-control. And so self-control is self-mastery, and um, it's, to, it's the pursuit of uh, godhood, the kingdom of God. So remember, any time you're feeling a certain way, just test it. It's going to be hard because you're in your emotions. And it's hard when you're feeling what you're feeling because you're consumed with it, right? feel and you're driven by that because it's emotions, energy, emotion. That energy is in motion in you, but it's coming from thought. If you can look at the thought, you can start to control yourself. You can say, wait a minute. That's one way to look at it. And I can look at it like this. I choose to look at it like that. And this comes into what is called self-esteem. Self-esteem governs self-control. But if you have low self-esteem, then more than likely you accept the less of the thought frequencies that we have available. And remember, every situation is like a pie, right? With eight mm. slices. Unless each slice is a perspective. And four of them are